Okay, for 08 on, we are gonna be talking about neuromarketing. Um, I am joined by Seth Vibrock, 08 CEO and founder and marketing extraordinaire. I am really excited to be talking about this. I think it's absolutely fascinating and definitely a way of the future when it comes to marketing. So let's start at the beginning. What is neuromarketing? Neuromarketing, in a sense, is really just using what we know about the brain to do better marketing. Of course, there's the research and testing component, which could be a totally separate talk using things like EEG measuring devices, devices that track galvanic skin response, you know, facial expressions, because we don't always understand what's going on subconsciously for a given study. Like if we're having human subjects come in to give their responses about a website or a new product or a prototype, that's something totally different. Right now, let's focus on using the theory behind the brain as it relates to marketing. So this sounds pretty complicated, but how does it work? Can you break it down so that someone like me would understand it who maybe doesn't have a scientific background? You know, let's let's try. There's this thing called the primal brain, which we share with other animals from evolution. You know, we can instinctively react to and run from a lion just like a gazelle can. And this part of the brain moves fast and it's actually situated lower inside of the head than kind of this rational brain that we've, we humans and some of the mammals have grown um, through evolution. But this primal brain, you know, it reacts strongly to six stimuli. And these are six stimuli that anyone can take and apply to their marketing. So there is personal, contrastable, tangible, memorable, visual, and emotional. So let me explain each one a little bit. So personal, we already know about personalization. You know, that is important because the brain, the primal brain reacts to me. I need to survive. You know, it doesn't have patience or empathy, you know, and it doesn't have concern for its its well-being. It scans for threats before it attends to pleasure. You know, vigilance drives the speed and nature of its response. So really things that are about me, of course, react strongly to this uh, primal brain. And then things that are contrastable. So the primal brain is sensitive to before and after. You think of those weight loss programs. If you just show the person you know, after they have lost weight, but you don't show the before pick, the marketing response is going to be way less than if you show the before and after. Um, Things like risky versus safe, have, have not, slow, fast, faster solution versus slow. You know, this contrast allows the brain to make quick risk-free decisions. You know, otherwise the brain has to slow down and process. And then tangible. So, the, the primal brain is always looking for something that's familiar and friendly that can be recognized quickly, you know, something that's simple, concrete, and just easy. Otherwise, you have to go into this, you know, higher level brain to expend calories and the brain actually wants to, wants to save calories and save energy. So that's why simple messages and value propositions are so important because you know this primal brain otherwise can't process complexity without slowing down and using a lot of effort from the the higher up or rational brain if you want to read a book about it daniel kahneman's thinking slow and fast is the de facto book on that memorable things that are memorable so the primal brain remembers very little uh, but putting the most important content at the beginning and you know, repeating it at the end is super important to a memorable message that gets from your primal brain all the way up into your memory storage uh, rational brain. So when what you say in the middle of your message or delivery should be brief and convincing, maybe don't go over three claims, for example, Um, You know, this primal brain really loves uh, stories as well, because a good narrative is a pattern that we can easily process. It it requires fewer calories, so to speak, um, to process a good narrative, and that makes it easier to remember. 
So I know this is a lot, but it's a complex thing. So we have to go over these yeah, critical points, right? And then, of course, visual. The primal brain is visual. That's why we see hero images on websites and a family holding their kids. The brain processes this stuff really quickly without any effort. You don't have to think, oh, maybe I should have a nice, warm feeling to the family with their kids. No, that's, that's all automatic. And, and that's why that imagery is so important. And then finally, you have emotion, which is that the primal brain is strongly triggered by that. You know, if, if there's not some sort of emotion, you think about the, the visual response to that family. You, there's, there's one aspect, which is the visual response, but then there's also the emotional response, right? Like giving you that awe that you don't have to think about, that it's just, it's this primal reaction to that imagery. So all of these six things together, the goal is to engage persuasion slide theory. Like how do you get someone to take an action, whether it's contact us, buy the product, you know, whatever that CTA is, you have to start with these, you know, some of these six uh, primal stimuli to get your user to perform the desired action. So it sounds complicated, but if you can distill it into these six things, and then these six things are, you know, you have to evaluate your messaging, your website with the imagery, your ads, all of these things you need to use to move people towards action. That's really what we're doing here. So the bottom up effect and then getting that kind of boost to activate things like engagement uh, and retention of a marketing message. Phew. <laughs> that, was, that was a lot, but that was really a lot. It's a lot. I, being in marketing, I want to like try to train myself to be more cognizant of what's happening when I'm being pitched to marketing to see if I can pick up on those different six stimuli and then maybe apply that. It'll be interesting to see, um, you know, when I'm getting my own messaging marketed to me, how I'm reacting. So I think that, that was super cool. Thank you for that explanation. Sure. Um, there has been, however, some criticism of this concept. So some people might say it's an invasion of privacy or perhaps manipulation. What's your thought on that or how would you respond to that? Yeah, you know, of course we want to be ethical in in the way we go about communicating messages. But really, again, it's, it's about not ignoring what we know about the brain. It's really just a way to do better marketing. Um, and again, of course, there's the research aspect of things, which has its own set of guidelines and ethical standards. Beyond common basic ethics, I really don't personally think there's anything wrong with just looking at the brain and how we make decisions. And it's really being more empathetic and personal and, you know, looking at things like emotional. So I don't, I don't think there's a problem with it. How are businesses using the science or maybe how should they be using the science? Yeah, well, you know, a lot aren't. So one of our goals is to have businesses look at the data, right? Sometimes that's, that's step one. But even when you get into the A-B testing, for example, you, know, you test a different version of the homepage and see which one increases conversions, you should at least have a theory before you do that kind of scientific experiment. And this uh, is a really nice framework for guiding A-B testing. You know, let's, let's use what we already know about the brain rather than just making a guess or, you know, whatnot about what version would be better, you know, for the A-B test. So it's a very powerful tool to use and in informing everything that you're doing here. So I, I really don't think a lot are you are using neuromarketing to the, to the full extent. And I really do think it's an important thing for folks to be uh, paying attention to because it can be the difference between an ad campaign that flops or a homepage that, you know, doesn't lead to conversion. Yeah. And then it sounds like something that can be used both for inbound and outbound strategy. Is that correct? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So, you know, inbound, your whole customer journey, you know, again, this is kind of a bottom up effect. And maybe, you know, you do trigger retention and memory of your marketing message. Maybe it's not an instantaneous thing. You know, uh, it might be 
20 touches before you get someone to actually convert, you know, to, to choose an action, to engage with you. But this is definitely a way to think about that journey. And then outbound, you know, similar. It's, it's just messaging. It's just, you know, using what we know about the brain. So it really can be applied to everything. Uh, marketing, politics, you know, pretty much, pretty much everything where there's a message. Yeah, that's. I wonder if they train. Speaking of politics, I wonder if they train politicians in this, or if they hire people that that have expertise in this area. Um, I'm fascinated by this, like I said, and uh, but I just I don't know if I have the confidence that this is something I could execute myself. So is this something I could study and learn more? Where can I go to learn more? And is this something that I could hire an agency for? Yeah, you know, I I really want to give a hat tip to the originators of this field, uh, the folks at uh, SalesBrain. There's a book called SalesBrain and a Company. So go check out that book. Also, The Persuasion Code, which is their latest iteration on the literature. And then that Thinking Fast and Slow book that I mentioned. But of course, you know, that's just kind of the neuromarketing component. Mm -hmm. To weave your neuromarketing into your ad campaign or, you know, uh, web design, homepage, messaging, they're not necessarily going to be able to do that. They might be able to teach you some things or guide you through some research studies, for example, if that's what you're looking for. But, you know, if, if the DIY doesn't approach or it doesn't work for you, then um, definitely contact an agency like us who understands it because it, it is a critical portion of a holistic digital marketing strategy but as you probably can tell it's really complex and it's it's hard to hard to apply um, across a holistic digital marketing strategy absolutely i feel like that should become a qualifying question that businesses ask now when they're interviewing agencies you know what do you understand about neuromarketing and do you apply it to your efforts um, so this has been super helpful i'm going to look into those books so